there's a bunch of benefits that come with fasting, but a lot of them are spearheaded by the increase in adrenaline, the increase in catecholamines. That drives a lot of the lipolysis, a lot of the fat burning associated with fasting. It drives a lot of the cognitive benefits that are associated with fasting. So part of what I do, literally for a living, is look at different bodies of research and put things together. And one of the things that I've been really looking at a lot lately has been the association between vitamin D and its effect on catecholamines, its effect on adrenaline, its effect on noradrenaline, norepinephrine. So could we theorize that vitamin D deficiency could actually reduce the effectiveness of a fast? Let's go ahead and dive in. It's very interesting stuff and it's a pretty strong hypothesis. So before I break a fast and after I break a fast, I use Element. Element is my preferred electrolyte. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. It's like the trifecta of minerals that are so perfect when you are fasting. So the link down below is really cool because it gets you a special gift. Okay, when you use Element, when you buy Element, you get a free sample pack that has one of every single flavor. So this is perfect for you or if you want to give some to a friend that hasn't tried it yet and they want to try a different flavor. Like personally, I love the watermelon salt. I love the lemon lime. I love the mango chili, but my wife, she really likes the lemon habanero. She likes the spicy one. She likes the raspberry. She likes the orange. So we have our favorites. So sometimes you want to give a sample pack to someone so they can try it out for themselves. But this is cool because it's not just for new customers. It's for returning customers as well. So that link down below is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. And that's going to get you that free gift along with your purchase. Again, it's going to change how you fast. Finally, you're able to sip on something while you fast. It isn't breaking your fast, but it's also doing you more good than harm. So check them out. Use that link down below in the description. So I think we're all fans of vitamin D here. We talk about it a lot throughout different ways and different reasons. Okay, well, one of the things that is heavily looked at is the association between vitamin D deficiency and calcium. Now, what does that have to do with catecholamines? Well, I'll make some sense of it in just a second. So basically when you're fasting, you have an increase in like adrenaline, epinephrine, these catecholamines. And what they do is, yeah, they can increase uh, activity of the brain from a survival aspect. The brain benefits you get of fasting. But adrenaline and norepinephrine, these also stimulate hormone sensitive lipase, which acts like a pair of scissors to cut the fatty acids off of a glycerol backbone, basically liberating fats from your stored body fat. One of the reasons that fasting potentially works so well for fat loss is because you are upregulating that process. You are increasing lipolysis via the action of more hormone sensitive lipase. Well, if you start looking at the data, you find that vitamin D deficiency stimulates this increase in calcium extraction from the bones which actually plays a role on inhibiting the action of catecholamines. What does that mean? Well, let me reference some studies so it makes some sense. There was a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It took a look at 171 participants. And in this case, they gave them 1,050 milligrams of calcium and they gave them 300 IUs of vitamin D. And what they found is that when they gave subjects this combination, they didn't have a change in body fat or weight per se, but after 16 weeks, they had a significant reduction in visceral adipose tissue. Well, why did this happen? What are the potential mechanisms here? Well, the reasoning behind this, more than likely, if you look at the other data and you put together the mechanisms kind of in a correlational fashion, it looks like this. When you're deficient in vitamin D, you are decreasing the absorption of intestinal calcium. Okay, so vitamin D deficiency means that you absorb less calcium in the intestines. What that does is it puts your body into a state in which it's desperate for calcium, because calcium is a very important mineral for muscle contraction, just about anything, right? So you have a hormone called the parathyroid hormone that is secreted by the parathyroid gland, okay? When you have an increase in parathyroid hormone, an increase in parathyroid activity, what happens is that parathyroid hormone goes and it goes to the bones and it pulls calcium out of the bones, okay? What happens when you have calcium coming out of the bones via this mechanism is you can potentially end up with chronically high levels of calcium. So like a short-term deficiency in vitamin D doesn't necessarily do this, but a longer-term deficiency like many of us deal with can certainly lead to this issue. So then you have chronically high levels of calcium because of a dysregulation of the parathyroid and vitamin D in that whole axis. High levels of 
calcium in the blood are not necessarily good. There's certain risk factors that are associated with that, but in the world of visceral fat, that fat that's underneath our subcutaneous fat that gives us a pot belly that has dangerous components to it that's metabolically active, okay, what happens is the calcium gets sucked up into the fat, okay? And when the calcium gets sucked up into the adipocyte, it actually triggers fatty acid synthase to become more active. And what fatty acid synthase does is it allows us to store more fat because synthase is an enzyme that synthesizes fat from the fatty acids. So we now have more of an enzyme to create more visceral fat. This is a serious problem. So deficiency in vitamin D is correlated with higher levels of visceral fat, more than likely because of this mechanism. Okay, now it does something else though too. This calcium flux inside of an adipocyte, inside of a fat cell, at least at the visceral fat level we can say, also inhibits the lipolytic effects of catecholamines. It inhibits lipolysis. It inhibits fat mobilization that is normally triggered by the catecholamines like adrenaline and norepinephrine, the big drivers of fat loss for a fast. So are we losing some benefit from a fat loss perspective with our fast because we are having this anti-fat loss, anti-fat mobilization, lipolytic effect that is occurring as a result of a calcium flux, right? So we're not able to get the same benefit from hormone-sensitive lipase, from catecholamines as we ordinarily would during a fast. So on a normal scale, in a person that isn't fasting, this is important. So catecholamines are always important for driving fat loss. They are a key regulator, a key initiator of fat loss in many ways. But with fasting, that is enhanced. It becomes even more important. So it's even more important with a fast, does that mean that being deficient in vitamin D really is inhibiting you from having optimal results with your fast? I'm not here to say that this is the reason why and it's the magic trick, but I am going to say that if you're someone that's putting the effort into intermittent fasting, you might want to consider putting some effort into restoring your vitamin D levels. Now I always talk about this because no matter who you are, you're watching my videos coming in from different angles, different labyrinths on YouTube, whatever, the best way to get vitamin D is through the sun, period. Get it through the sun. If you cannot get your vitamin D levels up to where you want them to be through the sun, the next best thing is going to be through the food, okay? Eggs, sardines, fatty fish, mackerel, with everything, eating the bones, all that that's easy to consume, that uh, good quality liver, good quality meat that's gonna have the vitamin D, grass-fed, grass-finished meat, high amounts of mushrooms, like cremini mushrooms, and get the mushrooms that have been exposed to high UV light. They actually say that on the label, the more UV light that mushrooms are exposed to, the higher the vitamin D2 content is, which converts to D3. If that doesn't work, then look at cod liver oil, which is going to have vitamin D and the bioavailable retinol A, so you're not depleting retinol A. Okay, so that's the next best bet. If that still doesn't do the trick, then look at vitamin D synthetic forms, actual vitamin D supplementation in that hierarchy, okay? If that doesn't get your levels up, then you definitely need to possibly see a doctor and do a more prescription dose, and that's something to look at too. No matter what, vitamin D, if it's taking in a synthetic form, in a supplement form, do not neglect vitamin K2. You need vitamin D plus K2 for it to do its job. And that's a whole different story for a different day, but now you have the hierarchy. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.